show me everything. 255 here. What up? What up, Deep Minds? Today we are discussing Project L's new development video. The developers have confirmed that Project L is going to be free to play and that it's also going to respect players' time and money. I don't know how much you can respect a player's time when it comes to a fighting game because there are things like discords, there are tutorial videos, the, the game already looks like it's very mix friendly. I don't know how you respect a player's time in that way. I mean, if you are into the fighting game, I don't know if they're saying they're gonna allow you to play as deep as you would like to. They're gonna make the mechanics simple to get into. I don't know if they're gonna fix the ranking system because with fighting games, after a while, if you play the ranking system long enough, the people that were beginners begin to become more expert and experienced. So they may be in bronze or silver or something like that. But in reality, they're playing at a higher level than they were at the beginning of the game. So even the new beginner coming in is experiencing something completely different. So I'm wondering how they're gonna do the time and rank mode. As far as money and costumes, my guess is that they're going to make sure that the only money we'll be spending, I guess, will be on characters and DLC costumes. And I would much rather spend money on that because fighting games are much more enjoyable where you can play a character that has at least a moderate skill level. It's, it's good, he's like A tire, A B tire. And you can win a lot of matches with him. He doesn't have a lot of bad matchups. And you enjoy the character. There's nothing worse than playing with a top tire character that you don't like because you need to win. It's, it's just, it just kind of ruins the experience. But when you have a character that's good, he's not too overpowerful, and you can play with him, that's what people like. So I guess they're aiming to do all these things. They also mentioned that they're going to make it easy for you to play with anyone anywhere at any time that i guess they're developing a greater version of rollback the new news we have is that they have a new character and they have a letter kind of a developer's letter that they want us to look at so we're going to take a look at that okay so they start off by letting us know hi all i'm sean unconquerable rivera associate game director and gameplay design lead for project l riot's upcoming 2d fighting game we just got an update from Tom Cannon about our aspirations and current focuses as a development team. And I'm super excited for us to be able to provide a small update on IOE, I may be pronouncing the name wrong, um, an upcoming fighter or champion in our game before the team working on her shares some early insight into her development. I wanted to talk a little bit about the development process and Project L overall. I really think it's good that this is continuing where developers are talking to us and giving us more information. It definitely helps with fighting games. Uh, the silence we got about Dragon Ball Fighters or the, or the nonsense we had with uh, Street Fighter VI or even how long we're waiting for these DLC characters and Guilty Gear, that type of stuff needs to go away. And uh, I, I really hope they can change this up. Anyway, they continue. We start off by deciding which champions we want to pursue. Our ultimate goal is to have a diverse and inclusive roster where everyone can find a champion that truly speaks to them. There are a ton of considerations such as, but not limited to, fight fantasy, theme, archetype, team synergy, race and ethnicity, personality, identity, size, etc. Once we have a champion in mind, we plan out when we'll begin working on them and then create a pod which consists of folks across disciplines such as design, narrative, art, engineering, tech art, QA, production, and audio. You know, and it's interesting to be talking about this because when you think about someone creating one character, you kind of forget that all these things go into it, but this is exactly the process. At a high level, we have a few phases we move champions through in our champion pipeline, but today we're going to focus on the first, DNA. If you see any of our character development stories from League of Legends or Valorant, this term might look familiar. At this stage, our designer, narrative, writer, 
and concept and animation artists, get it, DNA, focusing on exploring possibilities, inspiring each other with cool visuals, thematics, and kit ideas until something exciting emerges. And I think that's what that's what it's about. Right? Like they're saying there, they they get these champions and they try to get a champion that's uh Something that everyone can connect to because obviously the developers of Project L understand the importance of having a character you're attached to. If you're attached to a character, y'all keep buying great costumes for the character because I like the character. That's what keeps games going. So this is looking good so far. And again, design and narrative and writing is pretty interesting because you know there's not a lot of heavy, I guess with the exception of Guilty Gear, um, of story that goes into characters, but it seems like they're going all out. From there, using some extremely rough models and kits, we get the ideas into the game. Once we've locked down a direction, the team expands to include the rest of the disciplines that will be working on the champion, but that stage is something we'll cover at a later date. As to, again, maybe am mistaken on, uh, Ioni or Liona in particular, we have an overwhelming number of champions to pull from League of Legends. There are beefy juggernauts, agile assassins, and powerful mages to name a few. Still, we try to be thoughtful when deciding who to bring to Project L. We want to make sure we've identified champions who can both improve our gameplay and be enhanced by being in our game. In short, we want to elevate their fantasy. The juggernaut should be beefier the assassins more agile, and the mages more powerful. But beyond that, they should still feel true to who they are. We still want players who know and love these characters to see what they expect and to give them a little more. That is what, like, that's it. They get it, <laughs> you know? And I, I'm coming from the FGC perspective. I'm not coming at as a Riot game player or a League of Legends player. I'm coming at this from the uh, FGC perspective, for those that don't know, fighting game community perspective. Yes, characters are everything in fighting games. And uh, I don't, I can't express that enough. You can tell that from Dragon Ball Fighters, that sells probably boost or drop, depending on whether a Janemba drops or Super Saiyan level 4 Gogeta drops. There's a big difference. There's a big difference between um, Sekira being downloadable or Ken being downloadable, Sagat being a DLC or Dalsum being a DLC. These are all big differences. So I am very excited for this. It sounds like they got it and it's gonna be free to play. Essentially, we want players to see a champion and Project L do something they've never seen before and think, holy ish, they did what? Of course they could do that. Our narrative director, Scott Jardin Hawks, was the one to pitch IOE as a member of our starting roster. When thinking about my experience against her in league, especially after a well-placed ULT, listening to him talk about her story and theme, experiencing her role and Ruin King, the League of Legends story, and chatted with the team about a number of ways we could really elevate her champion fantasy and Project L, I was beyond stoked to include her. It felt like we could really create something special while paying homage to all of this new character's fans out there. And I hope you all feel that way once you get done reading. Okay, pretty cool. Uh, good, uh, good so far. Narrative. <clears throat> Scott Jordan Hawk stared at the director. Our goal with each champion is not is to not just deliver what players expect. Instead, it's to reach higher and deliver what they deserve. And Ivy is no different. Our work on narrative began during I ideation. Our work on narrative began during ideation by defining Ivy's core truths: who she's been and who she is now and who she could be in Project L. Our goal was to answer one question. Why is she a champion that we absolutely need to make? So they're picking characters and they're making sure that the characters, of course, 
for you Project L folks or Riot game fans that you're still getting the character, but they're making sure that each character brings something essential to the game. They bring something needed, and that's something we, we want in a good fighting game. Uh, IOE was released in League of Legends nearly seven years ago. Wow, these characters got some history. Where she's been a staple or nightmare of top laners ever since. We've also seen her overwhelm her enemies in Legends of Ruterra and save the world from Ruination and Ruin King. With support from our central IP strategy team, I wrote a champion brief that sums up what makes IOE special and what is it that players across the world love about her. IOE is the truth bearer of Naga Kaboros, the deity of life, ocean storms and motion, was often depicted as a colossal kraken. IOE and her people came from the Serpent Isles, an island archipelago that includes Bilgewater and her home island of Baru. Okay, so what we know about this character so far is that she has a uh, connection of some sort. She's a truth bearer. And I guess she's kind of like a messenger for this Kraken that controls life in ocean storms. In League of Legends, IOE's gameplay focusing on testing the worthiness of individual of indiv <clears throat> In League of Legends, IOE's gameplay focuses on testing the worthiness of individuals using the golden artifact known as the Eye of God. Wielding the massive idol, she rips souls from their host bodies and summons spectacle tentacles to repeatedly slam into them. Okay, so that definitely makes from a uh, interesting art design. I. Trying to imagine what this idol looks like. Of course, it's, it's a, a big giant hammer comes to mind. You League of Legends players probably know you've looked into it. I, I'm not very sure myself, but uh, she definitely sounds like she has an original design. In our story world, those who survive Nagaboro's tests are deemed to be on the correct path and can move forward to pursue their true purpose in life. While those who fall are left in no uncertain terms that they are failing in their duty to move their own lives forward and are hindering the flow of the universe and in this an experience that all, all survive. So, I mean, she's universal level. Using all of this information, we define Iowa's core truth as a powerful and charismatic spiritual leader who inspires others to be their own unstoppable force. She turns heads and dominates a room with her physical presence and confident purposeful swagger. Then using the brief, I worked with the other discipline leads like design and art to create a North Star for her development. This way we ensure that IOE is instantly identifiable, even in a drama we've never seen her in. And even more important, we use it to look for opportunities to grow her legend because a fighting game is the perfect place for IOE to shine. I mean, when I first saw this character, I'll be honest, I was just like, blah. Whatever, okay, a giant female character, that's cool. But now reading her backstory, like, and learning about the character, it got me hyped. I don't know about you, but we need more of this in fighting games. Like, this gets you hyped. Like, she got all this, this background to her, good. <clears throat> With a clear picture of her in our minds, we can make sure that anyone who already knows IOE beyond the surface level also finds the character they love, while still empowering the development team to delight even her most devoted flowers, followers with a version that will blow the doors off, or in her case, rip the doors off the hinges with magical tentacles and beat you senseless with them. So she's already a big character, it's gonna have these giant tentacles hitting you and this giant idol. It's a very original character. They want her presence to be amazing. When you use that juggernaut word, you know juggernaut from X-Men, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 instantly comes to mind and it's just exciting. Juggernaut was always an exciting character. So I'm gonna be very interested to see what they do with her. On a personal note, 
I've loved who Ivy is and who she could be since we developed her for League back in 2015. And although she's not one of the more popular champions in League, I think it's easy to see how Ivy's combination of bruised knuckles, devout heart, and joyous swagger combined with all the new experiences we can put in players' hands can make her a superstar Project L. All right, so they make a very interesting case, a fairly good case, making us a starter character in the roster. Now, normally the next section is art, and I would be more inclined to skip that, but let's be honest, when it comes to fighting games, art direction is everything. If I don't like the way a game is designed, I'm not gonna play it. I don't care what you say about it, you can say you play for game mechanics, but at the end of the day, when it comes to entertainment, art direction is very powerful. Uh, we take One Piece, for example, one Piece, most popular manga of all time. When it first came out, a lot of people didn't like the art. Now people like the art, but just by being turned off, even though it has a great story, it has great characters, when people don't like the art design of a game, they, they're not going to play it. So let's, let's check out this section to see what they got. Art. Mike Zanatris, Henry, creative director. Once narrative has given us a good understanding of who a champion is, we move into their visual direction. You can infuse so much more into a champion when you know who they are, especially when we compare all of their visual representations, which I always certainly wasn't lacking. Some of our champions lend themselves well to being altered quite a bit, whereas for others, it would make sense for them to drastically change their appearance. When we started on Aoi, it became clear she would be the latter. She has a really iconic look, tall, muscular, and imposing, but more than that, she's joyous, spirited, and believes in challenging others to live their lives to the fullest, and all of these things needed to be reflected in her appearance. Okay, so now I'm looking at this picture here, and it looks like her idol, it, I swear, looks like a giant skull. It's like this gold, and you can see the picture on the screen, it's like this golden skull. And she can be hitting people with that in technicals. I think it's also pretty cool that even though she's this extremely powerful, potent character, that she wants to help people. I mean, it it makes you interested, even if you don't necessarily pick the character, it definitely gives you a lot of respect. And if they're gonna be giving this type of breakdown for all the characters, I mean, Project L is going to be pretty exciting. Ioe's physical build is pretty unique in the roster of League of Legends champions, and we've referenced a lot of athletes with the focus on weightlifters and shot putters, mainly women who spend a lot of time lifting things as easily as Ioe lifts her massive weapon. Her clothing is very purposeful. She's not exactly the type to keep up with the latest Returnian fashion trends. I guess that's some type of League of Legends uh, group, or maybe she's from. So we decided to keep her outfit and color palette similar to what most players have come to associate with her, while altering the blocking a little to make it fresh and capitalize on Project L's perspective and overall art style, okay? From her weapon to her braces to her earnings, we put a ton of thought into the small changes we made to her design to make sure she still felt true to her base form and league and her people. So when they explain it like this, it gives you confidence that the directors of the game are doing everything they can to make sure we have an enjoyable experience. They're doing it right. They're making sure that, yes, as fighting game fans, we're already intrigued, but they're making sure that the people who do play League of Legends are gonna look into this game. No doubt, the characters that were more popular and sold as DLC is gonna make uh, more money and have a higher chance of making it into the game. We also need to think about how IOE would move. To do this, we use something called movement studies. Fighting games are really dynamic, and in order to explore movement really fast in the earliest stage of development, our concept artist drew IOE in various poses for the animators. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. You can see how she's there. That's definitely a skull. That's wild. You can see in the image all the way to the left that IOE, uh, it's holding up like a shot putter. They got one of her doing like a dunk. 
Oh, okay, I see the, the tentacles. Wow. That's pretty interesting. That's extremely interesting. Man, this game's kind of hype. It's kind of hype. I wasn't as hyped for it as first. I, I mean, it's free to play, so to say that you're going to get it is kind of a joke. It's free to play. You just download it and see if you like it or not. Uh, but this, the, that pitch at the bottom with the tentacles, so I guess what she's going to do is she either hit you with it from, like, by grabbing it by the head, or she can throw it around with the tentacles, so she can probably go long distance. A big juggernaut character with big normals makes sense. IOE has an extremely unique fighting style, which I said, without even reading that, I said that. IOE has an extremely unique fighting style, a heavy golden idol, and a spirit tentacles combined. So these motion studies help sort out some unknowns even more than if you were to use a sword or axe. We want to nail how her tentacles work and move, how her power is felt by her player, and how absolutely devastating it is to be hit by her. I have a, another picture here of the game designer throwing around like, uh, I forgot what that ball is, but you can see it there on screen. All right, we're getting, uh, once the movement study was complete, the animators worked with an early version of IOE to see how her size and proportions felt in the game. Using the movement studies, they were able to take the poses in game so we could see how IOE's proportions looked in the context of a fighting game. Once that's locked, it's on to game design to figure out her kit and how it's implemented in game. All right, let's go to game design. Carolyn, Riot, Shivana, Montana, game designer. I made IOE top lane in league, so I know her gameplay very well and was super excited for her to be in Project L. I feel honored to be able to work on her design in our game. That's good. When Developers actually play the characters and have a connection to them. That's good. Or community characters going to be top tier and never get dropped down. When we started the DNA phase for IOE, we did a deep dive into her lore and existing moments to find her core champion fantasy. We drew inspiration from all of her iterations, even from watching players play IOE. We really wanted to grasp what makes her feel powerful. One of the main things we identified early was that she was going to be a big body, a huge hurt box, massive hits, and slower movements with a simple to learn, hard to master kit. Those are the best types of games. Simple to learn, hard to master, Final Fantasy VII material system. For example, IOE is a strong and muscular woman who attacks with a giant totem. All right, so I was calling it a skull. It's officially called a totem. So it makes sense she would hit with her own physical strength as opposed to hiding behind the power of her god and magical abilities. You also needed tentacles. Iowi's god, Naga Kaboros, is a tentacled sea monster, and there needed to be some aspect of that in her kit. But beyond power empowering her attacks, Naga Kaboros also gives Iowi the strength to steal her opponent's soul. I mean, she's supposed to be a good character. Stealing souls? That's usually some villain stuff. But isn't it funny that she's the messenger of a god that she uses as a weapon? I mean, I don't know. It's pretty wild. <laughs> you know, like, I'm a messenger of God. Uh, what's your evidence? I'm going to hit you with him. You know. When figuring out which part of the dominant power, we decided that Iowi would be the source of power and that Nakaboros would have her back. Especially when you take into account how effortlessly she wields the giant totem. Using all of this research, we develop Iowi's goals and guardrails, which help us determine what direction to go with her kit and what is venturing too far away from her core truth. Um, interestingly enough, this development blog that they created, um, definitely other fighting game developers are looking at this, no ifs, ands, and maybes. And maybe they'll start showing us the amount of detail. Because it's always been kind of a secret. Unless you, like, I guess, dug deep. But this is the first time I can remember um, a development fighting game going so in-depth to explain a character's history, story, and mechanics uh, like this in, 
in a blog or uh, we don't really you know you kind of seen it with street fighter 5 they started to do it later and later seasons with that dan um season and secured all of them and uh, akira and the like but uh prior they didn't really see it but this really gives you more confidence of how much you're putting into it all right Interesting. I've never heard a fighting game player have goals, but I guess you could say certain fighting players have uh, goals. Like uh, classically, Ryu and Ken had the Hadouken trap. Shar Yukin back in earlier games before they kind of nerfed fireballs and gave everyone a way to get around them. But that, that's kind of a goal, so to speak. So let's look at Ayoi's goals. Ayoi fights alongside her god. Naga Kaboros is a constant looming threat that I always feel supported by an opponent's fear. Slow, but always in motion. I always is always moving, and she punishes those who are motionless. This is one of the key beliefs of her god, and we wanted to represent this through her gameplay. Overwhelming pressure? What a slow character, really? Once I always puts the opponent in a position where they get hit or need to block, she is relentless, forcing her opponent to make a move on her terms. Okay. That's it. She, she first has to be able to get them in a position to block. This is, it sounds good on paper. We have to see it in the game because there's been many times where a DLC character sounds a certain way and then we get them and it's, you know, completely different. Should be a, a main roster, but uh, it sounds fun enough. A big character, always in motion. She has long moves and she, I mean, she sounds top tier. If this is what they do, but I don't know. It depends on how, they, how they're doing it in Riot Games. Iori's guard drills. Iori is the powerhouse. Naga Gaboros has her back. Now, Iori's place physical strength is her main source of power, and this is what God are there to assist, not replace. Naga, I'm just going to call him Naga from now on, is not, not to be confused with Naga Ruki, but Naga is not the star of the show. Simple and straightforward. Ayoi's power fantasy comes from heavy, semi-short hits, heavy, long hits, and at the same time, staggered hits from tentacles, but not from the complexity of managing the state of many uh, entities. Not a puppet master. Ayoi shouldn't feel like she is ordering around her god. She can control the tentacles from her totem. However, any independently spawned tentacles should feel like gifts, not privileges. Ayoi doesn't get to spam these without earning them. Not a zoner. Ayoi doesn't want to keep away the opponent with tentacle hits. She wants to create openings to allow her to leap in and deal damage herself. And they are making me very confident. I mean, I guess these guys are behind the creation of evil, but these guys are making me very confident in what they're putting into their game. <laughs> and uh, I think as long as I can find at least two uh, characters that I are champions that I like, I, I'll definitely, I'm going to play it regardless, but I'll definitely stick with the game and play it. Because sometimes you get a character like Happy Chaos, who I love, but I really can't play because it's just... It's just not my style of character, but I like the character. It's just hard to play with him. But he is good. He is good. When it comes to what archetype I use to describe Aoi, I would probably be a big body juggernaut. I already talked about how you feel about that word. An overwhelming, battering ram who has the power of a god behind her. Aoi is a heavy hitter who dominates when it's her turn in the mid range and destroys the enemies with immense pressure. When we felt confident about the goals and guardrails, we started to design and implement early prototype specials and normals. The first version focused around Iowa's ability to spawn a tentacle at different ranges. A close tentacle with fast startup, mid-range tentacle with medium startup, and a long-range tentacle with a long startup. While it was fun to play, this type of design made Ioni feel more like a puppet master or his owner. Things that went against her goals and guard rows. It felt like the damage was focused on Naga Kaboros using tentacles from the ground when what we really wanted to highlight was Ioe bonking people with the totem. We're still super early and still in development and exploring our options, but the direction we're headed is to have the tentacles spawn a fixed distance away from Ioe. 
The tentacles come out only when she successfully hits her opponent on hit or on block. I like that. I like that they're going out of their way to not make a main roster character, a puppet character, because those are hard. You're talking about respecting players' time, and uh, <laughs> the, you better not make her a puppet master, uh, master. This small change has already made a huge difference in her gameplay and our play test. Instead of summoning tentacles from far away and controlling them at will like a zoner, Iowi now gets in her opponent's face, and when she does, there's also a tentacle slapping you around. One really strong image I had throughout developing her kit was that Iowi should be able to hit an opponent into a tentacle, have them bounce back into her, and she should be able to clothesline them like she's a pro wrestler, and the tentacles of knock morals are like the wrestling ropes. Okay, it makes more sense. All right, last part. What's next? Project L is an active development. Can we get a trailer? Maybe we get a trailer for Evo? Hmm? They say they only got one more major announcement for the year. So I don't know. Maybe we'll get a, uh, a trailer for Evo. Who knows? <clears throat> Project L is an active development. And I we still pretty early on. So we've got more work to do. But we'll check back and later on in her process with devs from areas like animation, visual effects, and audio to see how everyone's favorite big body, spirit, tentacle using juggernaut is shaping up. As for how we're doing overall, look out for another update from Tom before the end of the year. And until then, let us know what you think. Um, so that's that's it. Uh, leave your comments below. Uh, did this update get you excited? What's your um, response to IOE? Uh, looking forward to it. This is Deep Mind. Thanks for sticking to the end of the video. If you did, uh, leave a comment. Uh, this is 255 out one.